I'm going to ask you some questions about your background. You understand. Fair to say you're not a rookie cop. You've been doing this eight years. You've been involved investigating more than a hundred murders. And Baltimore is not a small town. It has big city problems. It has one of the highest murder rates in the country. As an investigator, your job is to get at the truth to solve a crime. That means you have to have good judgment. And having good judgment requires taking in information, figuring out what happened, following up on leads. It's very important. Lives depend on it. Public safety depends on it. If you make a mistake, people can die. If you fail to catch a murderer, there's a murderer running free. If you put the wrong person in prison, a murderer is running free. And that murderer can kill others. And you know in your experience that many murders are committed by people who've already murdered before. So you take your job very seriously. You don't mess around when it comes to your job. You don't cut corners when it comes to your job. You make sure that you do it right. And it's not as though you haven't had training. Fair to say, you've had hundreds of hours of training and investigation. On the job, by investigating murders, and also in classes. You've been exposed to the cutting edge in crime investigation. And you apply the knowledge you've learned in day-to-day -day investigations. And part of investigations are interrogations. I'm going to ask you some questions about interrogations. You understand. You are involved in interrogations all the time. An interrogation, you take a witness into a room. A small room. An enclosed room. A room without windows. And usually, you're conducting that investigation at the police department in a controlled setting, in a place where you can leave when you need to, you can enter when you need to. You can get a document, you can use a document, all in the most convenient way possible. So if you can help it, you're going to always want to conduct an interrogation at the police station. And as part of your crime investigation, you want to take all the technology available to help you synthesize information. Because it's not enough just to interrogate. You need to have a record of it so you can look at it later. And so other people can look at that information later. And fair to say, you're involved in a lot of investigations where you might not be present for every interrogation. So it's very helpful if there could be a record of an interrogation. Now a lot goes into an interrogation. A lot goes into your work as an investigator. When you're talking to someone, you're looking at a lot of stuff. You're listening to what they're saying. You're seeing how they're reacting to what you're doing. You're seeing how they're reacting to what other people in the room are doing. because. Fair to say, it's not just the interrogator and one witness in the room. Sometimes there's more than one interrogator. Sometimes there's more than one witness. So you are listening to what the witness is saying, you're, you're seeing what the witness is doing, and you're also watching what other people are doing. And you'll agree with me that body language is very important. In your training, you've learned to distinguish body language. What body language 
shows that someone's being truthful? What shows that they're being dishonest? What shows that they're relaxed? What shows that they're under pressure? What shows that they're afraid? What shows that they're angry? That's not the sort of thing you can gather just by hearing what someone else tells you about an interrogation. It's not something you can gather just by reading the words taken down of that interrogation. You need to see it. Now, ideally, you'd see it in person. But in some cases, it would be very helpful to see a video of it. Now, you'll agree with me that ideally, it would be better to be there in person. But, a video can still show you nonverbal cues. It can still show you things about that witness that is greater than what is on the paper. And you'll also agree with me that the way a witness says something is very important. Sometimes it's more important than what the witness says. The tone of voice, how quickly they're speaking, how slowly they're speaking, how long they're pausing before they speak, how quickly they're speaking after the question. And your analysis of this can help you determine whether the witness is being truthful. You'll agree with me that if you an investigation were deprived of ever being present in the room where a witness was speaking, it might affect the quality of your investigation. And if you were deprived of the ability to hear the witness speak, it might affect the quality of your investigation. If you were deprived of the ability to read a transcript of what the witness was saying, it certainly, certainly would affect the quality of your investigation. In that case, you would have to rely on what the witness <laughs> told you he said earlier. Or you'd have to rely on what someone else with the witness said the witness said. <laughs> you know about the game of telephone. That the more a statement gets repeated, the lesser the accuracy of that statement. And so you try to avoid the game of telephone in your investigations. You want to get right to the source. So these tools of technology you want to use to help your investigation. You like to use video. You like to use audio. You like to use transcripts to help you conduct investigations and help you be involved in other investigations and allow other people in the investigation to have a better sense of what you're doing. And it's true that your precinct has a video camera to be used in interrogations, has an ability to audio record interrogations, and has the ability to take what's said in the interrogation and make a transcript of it. I'm going to ask you a few questions about transcripts. You understand. Often, transcripts are created from interrogations. Those transcripts set forth what the witness said. They set forth what the interrogator said. And they should set forth what other people in the room said. But they don't tell you how quickly the witness spoke. They don't tell you how long the witness paused before answering. They don't tell you his tone of voice. They don't tell you all the, the things about his tone of voice that can help you determine if he's being truthful. And they certainly don't tell you 
what the witness is doing physically during the interrogation. They won't tell you if he's rustling papers. They won't tell you if he's tapping on a table. They won't tell you if he's doing something else that could help you determine whether the witness is being truthful. They also don't tell you what actions the interrogator is taking. They won't tell you if the interrogator is rustling papers. They won't tell you if the interrogator is handing something to the witness. They won't tell you whether the interrogator is knocking on a table or doing something else physically to convey an idea. And those transcripts also don't tell you the documents that the witness has in front of him during the interrogation. I want to ask you some questions about your interrogation of Jay. You understand. In total, you interrogated Jay for about 20 hours. Fair to say, about six hours of that are not recorded in any way. There's no... I'm going to back up a second. Scratch the last question. There is no video recording of any interrogation that you did of Jay. About six hours of your interrogation, there's no recording at all. There's no video there's no audio, there's no transcript, and there's, most of the time, no notes. There is, of the almost 20 hours, about six hours of audio. Now that audio isn't going to tell anybody scratch that the jury over there the jury is not going to know from the audio everything you knew being there for the interrogation they're not going to know from the audio what Jay was doing physically during the interrogation unless someone said what he was doing. They're going to have to rely on the people who were there to have an idea of what Jay was doing. They're going to have to rely on the people there to have an idea of what you were doing. And they're going to have to have rely on the people there to know what Detective Ritz was doing. They cannot see for themselves. The rest of the interrogation, there's no video of it. True. There's no audio. There's just a transcript. And that transcript does not tell the jury how quickly Jay talked, how slowly he talked, how long he paused between questions and answers, what you were doing when he was speaking, what you were doing during those pauses wouldn't tell them what Detective Ritz was doing during those pauses, and they'd have no idea, no idea what Jay had in front of him, what he was looking at, what documents he had to rely on. Because you'll agree with me that during those interrogations, he had the maps in the police file. He looked at the maps in the police file. He referred to the maps in the police file during the questioning.
I'm going to ask you some questions about the interrogation of J where there's no record anywhere of it. You understand. And these blank spots in the interrogation, the jury's going to have to rely on the people who were there to tell them what happened. That's true. The only people there were you, Detective Ritz, and Jay. So the only thing that the jury has to rely on about those blank spots are you three. You three are going to tell them what y'all talked about. You three are going to tell them what happened. And you three are going to tell them what didn't happen. I want to ask you some questions about, uh, about Jay's health. You understand? His health during the interrogation. Because you were there. Detective Ritz was there. Jay was there. So you know how he was doing. As far as you could tell, let's scratch that. You've done a lot of investigations. You've been around the block. You know when someone's sick. You know when someone has a medical condition that's evident. Was Jay sick? Did Jay have a medical condition that you could see? Was there anything that prevented him from speaking? from answering questions, from asking questions. You know what Tourette's is? Layman's terms. Tourette's. Involuntary movement. Involuntary speaking. Movements, muscle things that the person can't control. Fair to say, that's Tourette's. Did Jay have that? Do you have that? Does Detective Ritz have that? So there's no reason that anybody in that room was making noises involuntarily. They weren't knocking on tables, kicking the floor, rustling papers, excessively clearing their throat, pausing for long times for involuntary reasons. So when this jury, when they're listening to this audio, and they're hearing tap, 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 when they're hearing rustling a paper, when they're hearing long pauses, there's a reason. There's something going on that someone listening to it isn't catching. You've listened to these audio since you interrogated Jay. And you'll agree with me that if you've never done the interrogation, there's a lot you wouldn't know just from listening to the audio. There's a lot you'd miss. And if you were conducting the interrogation, excuse me, scratch that. If you were conducting the investigation and weren't there for the interrogation, you'd have to rely on the person that was there. You'd have to rely on the person that was there to tell you what was going on that you couldn't pick up on the audio. I want to ask you a few questions about the chronology documents that were in the police file. You understand? One of them was something called Jay's Chronology. That's in the police file. That was something you created. You created it around March 1999. But the substance of that document was around earlier. 
the evidence you were talking about the document you already knew earlier it was just that this chronology was prepared to put it all in a summary now this was a document that uh, Jay knew about when he was being interrogated you showed it to him you showed it to him during the interrogation and you showed it to him when something happened and he needed it well uh, your honor uh, can I come forward and play uh, part of the interrogation I want to I want to play for the witness thank you your honor Sorry, I, I missed a part. Apparently, that was um, that was that was something else. So I'm going to I'm going to move on. Our sound technicians going to handle that, and we're going to get uh, get back to that. Oh, after the break, Your Honor, I'm going to come back and uh, ask some more questions. So uh, the witness can be excused for a few minutes. Thank you.